Hi everyone, Ladislas Maurice from The Wandering Investor here. Today we're going to talk about Egypt. So I went to Egypt a few weeks ago, I was there in, in November, and when I was there I had a look at various real estate, I had a look at what was happening on the ground, and honestly I was quite surprised. So this video is just a short version of the articles I wrote on the topic, so if you want all the details go to the links below on my website, two articles on, on Egypt, on investing in Egypt. So taking a step back, before going to Egypt, I had some preconceptions about the place. I like to think that I'm able to see through a lot of the propaganda, but in this particular case, I, had, I wasn't able to, because when I got to Egypt, I realized that I was completely wrong. Um, I thought Egypt had, you know, nothing good was happening there. There was no real potential. The place was a complete mess, etc. I was, I was wrong and for a few reasons and i think that's that's important to know is that there are there are quite a few reasons why the egyptian economy is poised for strong growth in the short to medium term long term i don't know but short to medium term they're all the right catalysts in place like one the the government so the current government led by president sisi putting a lot of reforms into place, like IMF type reforms. So for example, fuel subsidies, which were a major thing in the past, were completely removed. And those are very unpopular reforms, but he plowed through and put them through. And that's been really good for the, for the economy. He's not scared of doing things that are unpopular. Another one is that the country has been going up the ease of uh, doing business rankings. It's now easier to start a business, uh, to pay your taxes. There are more minority shareholder rights, etc. Egypt is still a very complicated place to do business, but it's improving. And importantly, it's a massive country. Over a hundred million people live in Egypt, like bigger than any continental European country, really. And the population of Cairo is set to boom from 20 million currently to 38 million by 2050. So it just shows the the all the demographic growth that's taking place there. On average, women have 3.3 children which is higher than any european country so strong very strong demographics another important factor to take into account is the energy situation in 2012 egypt had rolling blackouts that's how that's how much the the electricity situation had been mismanaged now egypt is a net exporter of electricity to neighboring countries such as jordan and also it's in discussions with Greece and Cyprus to export gas and it keeps on finding new gas reserves in its chunk of the Mediterranean. So that's that's really a net positive, net positive for the for the country. Another aspect, it's a bit more controversial. Essentially, CC is in many ways copying the China model in terms of politics. So it means the state has a lot of say in how the economy is run and there's not a lot of freedom, but he's really directing the economy with large infrastructure projects according to priorities for the for the country for the years ahead. So, sure, a, a, a policy like this has limitations in the long run, but in the short to medium term, it's much better than the chaos that was before with the previous president or with Mubarak in the past when nothing really was happening, no reforms. Nothing much. It was just moldy socialism, if I can put it that way. Um, he's also completely focused on the economy. So whilst in Europe, I had to leave. There were, you know, the army was in the streets and there were curfews and all the bars and restaurants were closed, etc. Same thing in many parts of the Middle East. Um, Egypt, you can just fly in with a PCR test. Bars were open, clubs were open, uh, masks were mandatory in some private businesses that's it so the the government really prioritized the economy now is this good from a moral point of view you know that's for your own decision to make but from an investment point of view from a money point of view it's it's quite an attractive feature and major factor which is also very bullish for the for real estate is interest rates have been falling they're now below 10 percent that's a huge catalyst because uh, it hadn't been that way for years, years, years. And the result has been has been good. There's been good growth. Um, GDP has been growing since, you know, 2016 quite, quite strongly. The foreign exchange reserves are up. 
the currency is stable so that's important there's a lot of stability now in terms of the currency and it's a free floating currency so you can exchange your egyptian pounds for dollars take the money out of the country etc um, it's not you're not restricted in terms of moving your funds in and out of the country that's very important now of course there are still some negative aspects the country still has a high debt to gdp ratio close to 90 percent that's always a little bit worrying there's a large fiscal deficit as well then again that fiscal deficit is being you can see what it's being spent on and it's infrastructure um, so it's not being spent on like in europe on culture and paying people to do nothing and you know war in other countries etc this money is going straight back into the economy to build capacity so negative but at least you see what's what the money's being used for another risk is there's a relatively large current account deficit um, also that that can be attributed to to the large infrastructure projects and there's always the risk of reform fatigue coming in after years of pushing reforms onto the people the people might reach a breaking point and the government might take a few steps back and say cool we've done quite a bit already let's just slow down on the reforms which is hopefully will not happen um, and there's still you know unresolved political issues in in the country and there's a civil war right next door in in libya uh, with a lot of powers getting involved and also having israel as a neighbor is always a source of instability uh, let's not forget israel occupied the sinai peninsula for 15 years so a lot of catalysts for growth there are still negative aspects and risk but what's really important as an as an investor is okay good growth some risks but in egypt's case the risk is already priced in the assets so let's look at let's look at real estate specifically when you go to the to my article it I, sh I show a whole map of Cairo showing you the neighborhoods where that I find are good to invest, the neighborhoods you should not invest in, why, etc. But overall, what's happening is the city is gradually moving east. Okay, so the old city, Cairo, like the actual Cairo, is I hate to say this, it's but it's hell on earth, it's absolutely horrific. I traveled all over Africa, went to major African cities. And I have to say Cairo was the, the worst of them. Um, traffic, pollution, everything looks old, dirty. It's, it's, it's really, really polluted. Um, my lungs were actually a bit impacted when I was there. Um, so I can see why people would want to move out. So you still have some old neighborhoods in the center like Zamelik uh, that have staying power where most of the embassies are located. It's where the old money is and some of the older architectural gems you know you can get some nice historical buildings for about two thousand a bit less two thousand dollars a square meter which is which is fair uh you'll get yields of gross yields of four to five percent you know nothing extraordinary but if you bank on on the, the city really growing the population increasing it's not necessarily a bad bet in terms of the in terms of the the long in the long run but what cc has done is it's going to change everything he is building a new capital. It's called the New Administrative Capital. It's about 35 km kilometers east of Cairo. It's also, look at my article, there are links. Um, you can see some YouTube videos of what the project looks like. It's a city that is gonna house 6.5 million people, so the size of Madrid. It's gonna have the largest tower in Africa. It's gonna have the largest expo center in Africa and it's overall it's a, it's a massive project it looks like Dubai essentially it's, it's gonna be Dubai for Egyptians built by Egyptians and there are already quite a few of these new cities around Cairo some of them more popular than others and an important trend to keep in mind is that compound living is the way to go nowadays in Egypt and for the foreseeable future so if you're European you will probably have a hard time understanding this but people don't necessarily want to live in old buildings they want to live in compounds with in gated communities with security with nice green lawns and where there are all the amenities and new hospitals around new schools new universities everything so 
this is what the middle class wants and the upper class as well. And all of the new administrative capital in Egypt is going to be about the compound life. It's still early days. Uh, the first people are going to start moving in in 2021 or 2022. Uh, but already uh, the biggest, some mosques are open, large uh, Christian Coptic churches are open. Some universities are active already. So students are driving to campus there or taking the bus. Some schools are open as well. So there's already life. And what's important to, you could think, oh, there's a new city being built in the desert and then, you know, it's 35 kilometers east of, of Cairo. Who's going to want to go there? Well, and that's why you need to have local context to understand why people would want to move there. Um, one, the government is going to make people move there. So this is CC's main project, if I can put it this way. It's, he's put his name on it. Um, he cannot afford this project to fail. And honestly, Cairo needs a new capital because it's, it's just too much. It, it needs people to move out. So one, he's going to move all government ministries to the new administrative capital. All of them. So it means all the government workers, etc. they're probably going to have to move. There's going to be public transport, a monorail di directly between the new administrative capital and old Cairo. But still, people are going to be encouraged to move there. Um, a lot of the state-owned companies are going to be forced also to move there. Um, private businesses, to one can assume to, to show CC their dedication to the cause, will move some of their operations to the new capital. And embassies are going to be forced to have at least some offices there as well. And, and gradually over time, they'll, they'll probably move to the new administrative capital. There's also a new international airport that's, that's been built. So it's... It's not necessarily one of those cases of, you know, you've, we've all heard of these Chinese ghost cities where these ghost cities are built in the middle of nowhere and then gradually people come or they don't. This is a case of a new capital close to the existing capital. It's a project that is really required and that has the full power and force of a strong government behind to make it happen. Um, there's a lot of Chinese investment, so he's using Chinese consultants to drive this project and a lot of golf money as well. And this is where it's interesting. You can buy, listen to this, apartments right now off plan in these nice gated communities for, if you pay cash now for delivery in a few years, less than $500 a square meter brown face so it means you still need to finish the towels and you know put the kitchen the bathroom but the developer can take care of you it's 130 dollars or so per square meter not not too not too expensive so for less than 500 dollars a square meter you can buy into a massive project into essentially the new dubai of north africa of a powerhouse of 100 million plus inhabitants so sure, there are a lot of risks in Egypt, but at this price, it is more than priced in. When you take into account the cost of land, when you take into account the construction costs, the developers aren't making that much margin. And what's interesting about this, uh, about investing there as well, is that there's a government guarantee for all projects in the new administrative capital. So if, if your developer goes bust, the government is offering a state guarantee. So the government will either give you your money back as an investor or the government will finish the project. So you can speculate on real estate and that really interesting project with the, the Egyptian government covering your downside risk. Okay, now it's whether the Egyptian government will actually you know, pay you if something happens, but you know, it's written, it's there. Already there, there's been uh, one or two developers that have failed and people have gotten their money back. So when I was in Cairo, I took the opportunity to go check out a number of developers. I went to see a whole bunch actually, and I decided to collaborate with one of them. So why did I choose this one? One, the price was very attractive compared to the other ones. Um, two, it, it's a family run business that has a track record of 15 years plus of successful um, property development in Egypt. So they have a very good track record. Three, and that's usually important. Um, 
they didn't have a flashy showroom. Like I went to a few others, you know, gorgeous showrooms, expensive, pretty girls, the whole deal. But when you're an investor, you're paying for this. So sure, marketing's good, et cetera, et cetera. But I prefer value to either be in the quality of the build or in a lower price. Because if I'm gonna be flipping the unit or renting the unit, the pretty girls at the showroom, when I initially bought the apartment, aren't gonna do anything for my investment anymore. The Another key aspect is that customers can have access to the CEO directly. Uh, Mohammed communicating with him in English is, is not an issue, and he's had a few foreign customers as well, so he's used to the process. There are also multiple payment plans. You can pay cash up front. You get discounts of 25 to 35%. And there's also a 10-year payment plan option. So if the currency were to suddenly depreciate because of whatever issues, then you're, you're actually doing great because uh, you're still paying in euros, dollars, and your quarterly payments are going down. So being able to borrow money at a fixed rate over 10 years in local currency in Egyptian pounds is a very interesting play. So I don't think this is an investment that would quite be appropriate for people who, for, you know, for their first investment abroad. It's a bit, it's a bit too out there. Um, but if you've already done a few deals abroad and you have some cash laying, laying around, then this Egypt thing is, is a very interesting story to, to speculate on. In the big scheme of things, though there is risk in Egypt, when you're buying at this price, like at less than $500 a square meter, and there is a government guarantee on it, like the downside risk is actually quite limited when you, when you really think of it. Um, so I find it very compelling on, on multiple fronts. But most of the marketing is in Arabic, but it's fine. You'll see the, you know, you'll see the pictures, etc. It's pretty self-explanatory and Mohammed can take you through and explain the project to you. Look, and that's also another aspect I like about it. It's, you know, it's not a developer with flashy marketing in English targeting wealthy Gulf Arabs. Because if, if you buy one of those, you know you're overpaying. You're, it's going to be hard to flip. Because, uh, you know, the, the developer is making the margin, not you. But when you're really going into a project that is targeting the middle class uh, by a developer that has been targeting the, the middle class for years and that is good at it, that's also, it's what, it's what you want to bet on. You want to bet on the Egyptian middle class long term. That's the bet. Do I think yields are going to be high, rental yields? I don't know. Um, honestly, I don't think so, because once you get the keys, there's going to be a lot of supply and people are going to start moving in, you know, gradually. It's not going to be an overnight thing. I see it more as a flip opportunity. Buy now and then flip the unit later on. For more details on the project in my articles and feel free to send an email to mohammed at thewanderinginvestor.com and then he'll share all the, all the project information with you, the price lists, etc. Of course, as with any such investment, just always make sure to hire a lawyer in, in, um, in Cairo. It's pretty easy. Go to your embassy or any reputable chamber of commerce. Choose one of the major law firms, a local law firm, and send them the, the developer contract. Say, hey, can you have a look at this? And typically they'll charge you a few hundred dollars and they'll go through it and then you're safe. Again, none of this is investment, legal, financial advice of any sort. It's just opportunity. I just discuss opportunities that I see when traveling around the world. So do read the articles below and subscribe to the private list. Take care.